Hey everybody, welcome to Wine on the Dime. So today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Pepperwood Grove uh, Cabernet Sauvignon. It's from Chile uh, and it is 13.5% alcohol by volume. Um, oh, by the way, let me know what you think of the new uh, setup and the new shooting style. Decided to get away from my desk, set up something a little bit more formal, a little bit nicer in appearance. If you like it, leave a comment below and like the video. If you don't, then leave a comment below and like the video still? No, don't like the video, just do what you want. Anyway, so moving on. First of all, screw top. Yeah, that's important. Plus one on that. And the pour. All right, so now from this angle, you're probably going, how are you gonna do coloration? I can't see shit from that distance. Don't fear, because incoming B-roll. So anyway, so the coloration of the wine, I'm gonna say it's, it's going on a dark red with a slight hue of purple. There's not really much, um, not really much purple in it though. So I am gonna lean more towards a, a dark, dark red on this one. Um, but it is semi-transparent. It's not as dark as say like a Merlot. Uh, and so that's nice and I don't see any artifacts and looks pretty clean overall. So good job on that. Um, so now in the nose. Hmm, this is interesting. So from the nose standpoint, I'm getting a lot of uh, kind of ripe red fruits. So like raspberry, I kind of feel like I'm getting some cherry in there. Maybe like a black cherry though. It's 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 pretty dark. It's pretty dark. Um, maybe a hint of plum. Not really getting much oak though. Yeah, not getting much oak. All right. So uh, now from the taste standpoint, hmm, it's actually a little bit sweeter than I thought it'd be. But it's not. It's not a sweet wine. It's still going towards the dry, but it is a little bit sweeter. Um, very ripe uh, red fruits on this. Yeah, I'm gonna say definitely get the raspberry note. Um, definitely getting a little bit of black cherry in the in the finish, uh, and I'm also getting a little bit of. Um, I am getting a little bit of the oak, but just I mean like just a really slight taste of something oaky. And I'm not even gonna say it's oak. It's something oaky. Um, it's actually pretty soft on the mouthfeel too. Um, it, it's, it's soft on the palate. Okay, so verdict on Pepperwood Grove. Um, for this wine, I'm gonna say it's a try again. Um, sorry, try again. Uh, it's not a bad wine. It really isn't. It, um, it, it, has some elements there. It's 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 not really complex. It's not super heavy, but it's not something that's bad, especially at a five and a half dollar price point. Um, the comparison that I'm going to draw to is Frontera. When I tried uh, the Frontera cab, um, that was bad. That was bad. Like I, I pretty much poured that thing out. And um, this is something I could actually sit down and enjoy. And it has a different kind of profile than my other favorite uh, five, five and a half dollar wine, which is uh, Rex Goliath. So Rex Goliath actually has a really um, good Cabernet for the five, five and a half dollar point. But this kind of, you can tell that it is more of a South American style. It's a little bit drier, has a little bit more of a bite to it. Rex is a little bit more easy drinking. It's more of a, like kind of big fruity um, notes. And while this has um, some ripe fruit elements, it's not as, um, it's not as densely populated with the fruit as Rex is. Um, now, keep in mind these are five and a half dollar wines. They're pretty still. They're still pretty close to each other. Um, but overall, this is a try again, and uh, I would definitely pick this up again if it was an option, and I didn't have uh, some of my other uh, low dollar favorites to, to kind of compete with it. So, uh, though I will say though, if you are at a supermarket and you can find Cassiero del Diablo, um, yeah, uh, for about the seven 
dollar price point, it might be worth spending that extra dollar and a half to get that versus this. But if this is your option and you don't have Casiero or something else, you're not gonna go wrong with this one. So anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment, and let me know if there's any other wines that you want me to try. If you know any other five or six dollar bottles from Chile that actually are pretty good or total crap and you just wanna give me a bomb and see how I handle it on the show, let me know. Anyway, I'll see you guys again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime. Have a good one.